onward. Terminology, I'll run through this real quick because if, if I drop any names, I don't want you to be confused. Uh, the Latin name for, for pigs, uh, Sus scrofa domesticus. Sus scrofa is the Eurasian wild boar. Uh, domesticus just indicate it's the uh, domestic version of that, although genetically they're virtually identical. Uh, and in fact, they revert to a, a more feral um, version very, very quickly as we've seen all across, all across not only North America, but wherever they've been introduced, uh, Australia, so on. Uh, now technically hog refers to the whole of the species and pig is a young hog, um, what we would call piglets. Now that's sort of been lost in translation to the point where you know, we say pig. Um, a shoat, which is, uh, I put it up here because it's a term you may hear, basically it refers to a young or teenage pig, one that's been weaned but is still relatively small, say uh, 100 pounds about. Um, but that's sort of an antiquated term. A gilt is an unbred female pig, a young pig, uh, which can either be destined to be uh, bred or be destined for slaughter. Um, a sow is a bred female, an older pig, which has had at least one litter. Um, a boar uh, is an uncastrated male, <coughs> which you use for breeding. And a barrow is a castrated male, which is destined for slaughter. Um, pharaoh is the term for giving birth for pigs uh, when they have a litter. Um, and then finally, the only other term that might be a bit confusing is hanging weight, which when I talk about slaughter, uh, that refers to the weight of the pig carcass after it's been killed and gutted. Um, but the difference between, say, uh, a hanging weight for a pig versus a steer or, or cattle um, is that uh, pig hanging weight traditionally has the skin and the head attached, uh, which becomes important when you're trying to sell uh, to restaurants or to customers. Um, real quick, pig anatomy. Uh, they are little bullets made of muscle, which means that nothing gets in their way if their heart is set on something. They are incredibly strong, um, and their shape makes them very difficult to restrain. Um, very, very difficult. If you try to get a, a, a rope around, say, their neck or something, they'll back out of it. Try to get it around uh, a, a leg, they'll, they'll manage to slip. So they are really amazing little creatures. Um, just to call out... Uh, their snouts are miraculous. Um, there's hardly anything like it uh, in, in, in the animal kingdom. Um, they are uh, strong enough to flip over a 50 pound rock and then sensitive enough to snuffle out a single earthworm in the ground underneath. Um, they are, it's, it's a sensory organ the likes of which we really don't have. It, it, it'd be as if your nose was also your fingertip but as strong as your leg and as sensitive as the tip of your tongue. It's really amazing, and uh, one of the reasons I love pigs. Um, and that's how they investigate the world. They go snout first into the world. Uh, they love to root and snuffle and sniff. Um, and, and whenever you think of a pig, think of them going forward in whatever direction their heart is content on. Uh, more pig anatomy, worth noting. Uh, they have very poor eyesight. Uh, their hearing's a little bit better, but obviously they have a great sense of smell. And the reason I bring this up is if you're raising a couple pigs, and particularly if you have them fenced in with just electric fence, take care when you're coming up on them, because very often I'll be taking a walk around the fields, and the pigs don't know that I'm there until I'm right there. And then they all freak out, and they take off into the woods, or sometimes I've been unlucky enough, they'll take off through the fence. Um, so obviously if you're on a quad, or you have a UTV, or you're on a tractor, they'll hear that and they'll know you're coming, but if you're taking a walk, talk to them if you think of it before you get close to them, because you don't want to startle them and that freaks them out a little bit. Um, the other big uh, pig anatomy thing to keep in mind is they don't have sweat glands. Um, so they are prone to overheating. Um, they pant a little bit, um, but they're not as good at it as, say, a dog in regulating their body temperature. Um, so anywhere you raise pigs, you have to always make sure that they have shade or a way to keep cool. They don't need mud. Obviously, the archetypal image of a pig is them in a wallow. Um, which they don't technically need if they're in the woods and they have shade, but they certainly enjoy it. Um, so the key is to, if you can, give them a little bit of mud, but watch out because they can turn a mud puddle into a, a crater deep enough to lose a tractor in, in a heartbeat uh, if they're left on a particular area of ground too long. Uh, pig psychology, uh, very important. Um, a lot has been made, uh, you've probably read how, how intelligent pigs are, they're smart as dogs. And I would say that that's true to a point. Uh, they have a different sort of intelligence than any other um, livestock. They are very smart, they're very clever, 
Um, however, their, their intelligence isn't the same as, as, as uh, canines because they haven't been raised in as companionable close proximity as humans. So while a dog has more of an understanding of sort of what, it's, what a human is about, a pig's intelligence is more focused on finding food um, and keeping itself safe and seemingly destroying everything around. Um, they're very curious, they'll chew on everything, they will get into everything given enough time. They're cautious, I put this photo up because I like that little pig's eye, the way it's looking out the side of its eye. All these photos, by the way, with you know, an exception or two that I'll point out, are from our farm. Um, these are all the pigs we raise. Um, very cautious, gregarious. Uh, they are very social animals. They're not herd animals as much as some species, like sheep certainly, or cattle but they need companionship. So never raise one pig. You always want to raise two or more pigs. Um, that'll lead to depression and, and, and uh, some real problems in terms of being destructive. They like to chew on things and, and they'll certainly do more of that um, if they're by themselves. Prone to excitement, you'll see they get all worked up and they love to run around. Um, I just put that there because it's fun. Uh, very clever and that means that they're trainable, uh, which is very important. Um, they like treats. Uh, they really love shelled corn, uh, which is a very simple treat, uh, easily purchased, and um, you can train them to go on a trailer. Uh, that way you can move them around. You can take them to slaughter when need be. You can train them to go into a new area uh, when you set up a new pen for them um, to do pretty much anything you want. And it's basically just a very simple Pavlovian response. Um, you go, you give them some treats, you get them used to either the sound of your voice calling them or you could even do a bell or something. Um, and, and you can get them to do pretty much whatever you need. Um, and it's important that if you're going to raise pigs that you take a little time to do that because it'll make uh, certain transitions much easier. Uh, like I said, they're destructive. That comes along with their curiosity. And they're contentedly lazy. Uh, you'll recognize a pig is happy and content when it's just laying somewhere. Certainly they like to root around. Uh, but if they have access to food and they can fill their bellies, they spend a lot of time sleeping, which is a good way to go through life when you're a happy pig. Uh, pig psychology, again, um, when you're going to move them, they're easier to move together than alone. Pigs don't like to be alone. That goes back to them being gregarious. And that has not just in general, but just in the, in the singular moment. Um, moving two pigs is a lot easier than moving one pig. They will freak out and they'll go running off. Um, better to lure and coax than push or herd. Um, they are not easily herdable like cattle or, or sheep would be. Um, it's far better to train them to corn or a treat and then to lead them along with that treat. They think with their stomachs. So you can use that. You can outsmart them. It's tricky because they're quite smart. Uh, and I know sometimes I haven't won that battle. But um, you can definitely lure them into doing what you want. Um, and then this is far easier said than done, but you've got to be patient. Um, patience is key with all livestock, um, but doubly so with, with hogs. Uh, if you are going to move them, uh, it's better to use boards like a piece of plywood or a barricade to block where they're going. You have to think about how they see the world. And for them, they want to get away. Um, so you want to have something that will block their line of sight so you can usher them along. Just going along yourself with your arms outstretched is not nearly effective as having just a physical thing to block their line of sight. Uh, they will always avoid going where you want them to unless it's the only choice you give them. Um, obviously use corn to train them in the trailer um, and also block their, block their lines of sight.